Okay, so we have got Ahmed for a lower limb viva. Are you ready, Ahmed? Yes. Okay, so you've got this 35-year-old uh, roofer who fell from height while at work. Uh, these are her, his x-rays. Have a look at the x-rays. Tell me what you think and then tell me how you've managed this. Um, I can see on the screen a lateral radiograph of the um, ankle. Um, the most obvious deformity is a comminuted um, intra-articular fracture of the um, calcaneus. Um, uh, I can see that the baller angle is, um, is further flattened and, and the critical angle of descent is uh, more obtuse than it normally should be. Uh, I would want first to make sure that this is an isolated injury. Uh, I want, want to make sure that the ATLS protocol has been uh, applied. Um, and if this is an isolated injury, I would want to examine the um, patient uh, and be very mindful that uh, to look for the signs of symptoms and signs of compartment syndrome, which is uh, sometimes uh, quite commonly missed, especially in the calcaneal fractures. Uh, the amount of swelling and the skin condition, especially the bruising and um, the skin condition and the blowout fragment is very important also to uh, look for and to um, document. Uh, I'd speak to the patient uh, after he's been comfortable in a back slab or in a boot, I'll speak to him. I need to more about his um, job, uh, more about his level of um, activity. I would want to know also his uh, smoking um, history, if he's a smoker at all and how many cigarettes um, a day um, does he smoke. So yes, this is an isolated injury, um, ATLS protocols applied, uh, no compartment syndrome, um, moderate swelling and bruising as you would expect, nothing out of the usual. He's a manual worker, works uh, in the roof. Uh, this, as I mentioned, was a work-related injury. And uh, he is a, a heavy smoker. He's been smoking since 16 years of age and about 20 cigarettes a day. So I, I would have a, a very thorough, uh, detailed conversation with the patient um, uh, in, the, in a clinic setting and not in any setting, explaining the complexity of the injury, make sure that I set his um, expectation that this is a life-changing injury and most of the patients will continue to have foot problems afterwards. I will make him fully aware of the debate about the conservative versus the um, operative um, treatment of such injury. Um, provided that it's a showable foot, I will um, advocate for the, uh, the non-surgical um, treatment of... Do um, you want to get any images before you make any decision? Uh, I'll definitely obtain a, a CT scan uh, first. Uh, why, first. Why do you want a CT scan? Um, the CT scan gives me uh, an idea about the uh, fracture uh, pattern. I'll be able to classify the um, the, uh, the injury, specify the fracture according to the uh, Sanders classification, which is uh, a CT-based um, classification based mainly on the coronal um, cuts in the CT, the amount of the joint depression, the amount of the uh, widening of this at the subtalar joint. Okay, what, can you comment, quickly comment on these? Uh, uh, so I can see a sagittal cut and can, I can see a coronal and axial cuts of the CT scan. There's definitely intra-articular. There is um, um, a depression in the articular um, surface. Uh, I would say that this is a Sanders uh, 3. Um, so yeah. do you still want to go with your initial management that you, because you were talking, uh, you were talking about conservative, did this change your mind at all? Uh, yes, I still will advocate for the uh, non-operative um, treatment. As I say, I'll just make sure there's no, uh, there's no too much fares and still it's a showable uh, foot. And um, I'm, I'm aware there is um, uh, many papers which are looked into the surgical versus the uh, non-surgical treatment for such fractures. And I would like to quote uh, a particular trial done in the UK, which is uh, known uh, um, as the uh, HEAL trial. Um, it looked into all types of um, intraoperative, uh, uh, intraarticular displaced calcaneal uh, fractures, including all the Sanders classification. Um, and this trial at a two-year follow-up reported that there is no difference in the uh, pain scores and the patient satisfaction between the operative and the non-operative treatment. However, it, um, it commented that the risk of um, secondary procedures and uh, wound problems, as, you, as anyone would imagine, is higher in the, uh, uh, in the group operated um, upon. Um, so this meets me, especially the, given that the patient has as um, um, factors which make him among the, uh, the 
I would say poor prognostic factors, as in the male uh, middle-aged uh, manual worker um, history of um, excessive smoking, all these criteria puts him at uh, risk of having a poor prognosis uh, after surgery. So I still advocate for the, uh, for the non-operative treatment. Okay, thank you. Okay, tell me what do you think you've done? I think uh, I've done uh, relatively okay. I managed to say all I was, all what I intended to say when I first saw the x-rays. My only problem is, um, as I didn't mention the CT scan um, uh, early on, I should have, before discussing the options of the management, I should have uh, asked for a CT scan. Uh, so I needed prompting on that. And I think this is the main, uh, the main weak point I had in the discussion. Okay, yes, I agree too. I think you just got caught up in the vibe. Huh? Uh, and you wanted to be ahead of the examiner, so you just missed that point. Uh, that's fine. Um, regarding the treatment, um, do you um, do you think that we could have also talked, maybe discussed with the patients whether he wants operative or non-operative, or do you are you happy with uh, the way it went? No, I think I think uh, I definitely discussed with the patient operative persons and operative, and uh, I, I think I touched on that. I said that I'll make him uh, fully aware of the controversies of uh, treatment. Uh, but as uh, as a doctor, I think I will advocate if you ask about my opinion. Because this happens in everyday life, you get the patients who you tell them the risks and the benefits and get them involved. Yet at the end, they ask, "What's what's your opinion?" So, uh, so I, I maybe I didn't make myself clear enough. But uh, what I was trying to say is that I'll make the patient aware. However, uh, if he is neutral to both types of treatment, uh, I would advocate for the non-surgical treatment. I might have, I might should have phrased it uh, or made it even more clear. But yeah. I'll definitely involve the patients. I think it was. I think it was clear enough. Okay, thank you, Ahmed. Do you think uh, if if the viva went in a different direction, and if he was not a smoker, if this was uh, not a manual worker, would you have advocated different treatment? Yeah, I think if it was um, if it was for example a female um, a female um, relatively elderly with no history of smoking, um, I would at least had a discussion with the um, with the patient uh, um, and maybe give her completely the option of having it fixed or um, or not. This situation is very tricky and uh, and we face it in everyday in everyday life in the clinic because you have strong evidence that that suggests that you might be harming the patient with surgery yet we are uh, we are doing uh, much more surgery than theoretically we should be doing so it's a tricky situation and i don't think there is a right wrong answer but um, maybe in a different situation i would have been uh, more inclined to operate than this situation because this this man generally has uh, all the risk factors for a bad prognosis so uh, operating might be kind of inviting trouble okay i agree thank you one thing I would like to add is I think uh, a buzzword that Ahmed has hit in, um, in, in the Viva is uh, explaining to the patient that this is a life-changing uh, type of injury. Agreed. And um, he's setting the expectations early on from the first clinical encounter. I think that's a very uh, sound thing to do in clinic, in real life. And, of course, when you're answering in the Viva. Yes, I totally agree. Thank you. Uh, so I think if we go to the angles, you you should be aware of them, uh, and you might be asked to draw them uh, or demonstrate them on the uh, X-ray. Uh, uh, Sanders classification. We've heard about several candidates being asked about them. Uh, coronal cuts on the CT scan, and this is the study, the HEAL trial uh, that Ahmed was uh, mentioning, which showed uh, equal outcomes of um, between this, between both groups uh, operatively treated and non-operative treatment in intraarticular fractures of the calcaneus, um, and the operative group had more uh, complications. Um, anything you'd want to add, Ahmed? Mm -hmm.
No, I just want to, I didn't have the time to uh, to comment on the strengths and the weakness of such um, trial. Um, so it's, a, I think in your Viva, if you manage to say and to criticize the evidence, your coding would be even, um, you'd even look more of a, more like a, a, a type eight candidate. So the strengths point is that all the fractures have been, uh, have been uh, done by the, uh, have been fixed by um, specialized foot and ankle surgeons in trauma centers. Um, however, what the people criticize about this trial is that a large proportion of the patient has been um, excluded, either the patient refused to participate or because they were uh, deemed as uh, grossly deformed heel which needed operation and therefore it, they were excluded from the two arms of the trial in the first place. Um, so mm -hmm. if you can know the strengths and the weakness of the, uh, of the evidence you're quoting, you will, um, I think, definitely be much more impressive.